So now in this video, we're going to look at using the Arduino for digital inputs. And the example circuit that they give is this one here, but I wired it differently than they show. But in any case, the main point of it is when we press this switch, now you see the LED turns on. And that's all it does. Whenever you press that switch, the LED turns on and it stays on until you press this switch. That switch turns the LED off and it stays off until, of course, you press this switch and turn it on. So this has two stable states. As long as you had pressed that switch, now it's on. It's stable until you do something, which is press this switch, which turns it off. And it's going to stay off until you do something, which is press that switch. So the circuit's stable. You're the unstable one. You're the one that changes things. So now, of course, before we move on, the Arduino needs to be programmed. We call those program sketches when it comes to Arduino. This is an Elegoo Mega 2560 R3. It's a clone of the Arduino version. Arduino lets anybody make their boards and sell them under different names. As I said, it comes out of this kit. This kit includes everything you need to do for this circuit, including it has the sketch for the board, which we'll look at later, that you can just automatically upload onto the board. So now zooming in, let's look at the breadboard here. The breadboard's not the one in the kit, but it's exactly the same as the one in the kit. The switches, again, they're from a different kit, but they work the same. These are always on the breadboard, so I'm just leaving them there. The uh, little gray jumpers here, they are also from another kit. This kit has more jumpers like this that you can use, uh, but they're long wires. I like these jumpers better. They're going to make it easier for you to see what's going on, but when you build it yourself, you understand more of what's going on. But uh, these little jumpers here keep things uh, less cluttered. So now, You'll notice that uh, this uh, black jumper here, that goes to the ground pin on the board. We'll look at that later, but you'll notice that it connects to all three of these. So one side of the switch for both switches, and then the cathode, the short lead of the LED, as you can see there, that needs to go towards ground so that when you apply a voltage to the anode, a positive side of the circuit then it will light up right now it's off because there's not a voltage applied so now the LED and the resistor I also got elsewhere there's resistors in the kit this is a 220 ohm resistor but there's not much space for the resistors so they're gonna get cluttered if I use them for me it's easier just to use this resistor that I'm use often but if uh, the kit's all you got, that's fine. The kit has everything you need for these projects. It just won't be quite as easy to uh, store and stuff. But in any case, let's get to the point of this circuit. So, right now the LED is off. To turn it on, we have to press this switch. So one side of the switch, there you can see the pin there, goes to ground. And the other side goes to one of the slots on the board. We'll look at that coming up. And so... This jumper actually has a positive voltage to it. It's uh, 5 volts right now. When we press the switch, that will bring it to ground, which will drop it to 0 volts. The, the uh, slot on the board is looking for when the voltage drops to 0 volts. And when it drops to 0 volts, it tells this LED to turn on. So now, this one operates exactly the same, but it tells the LED to do something different. So this side has a positive voltage to it right now, but when we close the switch, that will ground it, dropping it to zero volts, and the LED turns off. Now, of course, the LED, as I said, that goes to ground. It's got this protective resistor to protect it from five volts, 220 ohm resistor, and so this is an output. It either has a voltage of five volts or zero volts for off. So right now the output's 5 volts and the resistors the controlling the current 
and then when we press this switch now we got zero volts at the output here which we'll look at coming up next and also zero volts here which is a zero volt difference so no current flows when we press the switch there's five volts here zero volts there that's a five volt different so there is current flow and so now zooming in the black jumper goes to pin ground GND it can go to any one of the ground pins I think there's four on this board that doesn't really matter but this green jumper that goes to the switch that turn the LED on goes to pin 9 pin 8 is this switch that turn it off and then the LED is connected to pin 5 and this is important to know this is controlled by the program called a sketch that I uploaded to the board earlier that's what determines what everything does and uh, we'll look at that sketch coming up so now this sketch is called digital inputs and it's on the CD that comes with the uh, kit comes in the kit it's in the digital inputs folder and cold English so we'll work our way back first and then work forward so when you go to the disk you go to the English language part and then uh, right here is a PDF file with instructions how to do things but uh, I'm telling you I'm doing my own lesson on it right now so we click the code file and then we come to lesson 5 digital inputs and uh, the digital input file and then we have the uh, digital input file that opens the IDE, the software that lets you write programs and upload them to the board. But of course, this one's already written for us. So we'll look at this in more detail. So now, up here, we label things for the board. Pin 5 is the LED pin. Pin 9's button A pin, and pin 8 is button B pin. That's what it means. And I don't know what this is for. Can't, can't help you there, unfortunately. Now there's the setup. So, I want to click that. So, we got uh, three pin modes. Remember, there's three pins. So the LED pin, which is pin 5, is the output. Remember, that's what was turning the LED on and off. And then... This middle one, button A pin, what this is saying is keep that pin with a voltage. That's what pull up means. You, you hold a voltage, in this case 5 volts on that pin. That's what it's uh, normally doing. And then uh, pin B here, again, hold the input up. And as I said before, those pins were holding a voltage up until we connected them to ground which dropped them to zero volts so now we're going to drop down to the loop part of the circuit so what it's going to do the arduino is just going to keep doing this over and over once everything sets up it comes to loop and it just keeps doing this over and over and until you stop it by unplugging it or uploading something hitting the reset button or something something like that but just remember the loop just keeps happening so what this line is doing is it's telling the Arduino to look at the voltage on this pin, pin A, or button that goes to button A, but uh, look at the voltage of that pin, and remember up here, we pulled it up, so normally it's high, but remember if we close the switch, that brings it to ground, and then it would be low, and so if it's low because we're pressing the switch, it comes to this line, and this line says to set the LED high, the pin that goes to the LED. It means give it a voltage of 5 volts in this case, and that will turn the LED on. And then after the Arduino goes through these lines, then it looks at this line. And this one's saying look at button B. So up there, remember button B, we had it set high. That's what pull up means, keep it keep a voltage on it but if it happens to be low because we press the switch remember that grounds it that drops it 
the voltage down to nothing. Then the uh, pin here, the button B pin, will be low. And then once it's low, then it tells the LED to turn off. So it's the LED low. And that's basically what those lines mean there. And so this is a pretty simple circuit. Hopefully you understand all of this. As I said, it comes with this kit on, on a disc. Otherwise, you'd have to type all this out. But uh, just as a reminder, the LED was pin 5, button A was pin 9, button B was pin 8. So remember, 9 was to the left when we were looking at it. So that was, or to the right I mean, the far right switch turned things on. And uh, that's button A. And here you can see button A, if you press it, it sets the LED high, turns it on. And then uh, pin 8, that was the switch to the left. It's the slot, the pin, to the left of 9. And uh, when we pressed the left switch to low, that turned the LED off, which was to low. And so now, of course, you have to upload this sketch to the Arduino. So you got to plug the USB into the computer and then uh, the other side into the board. So you don't need the 9 volt uh, power supply in there. Now it's being powered by the computer. And so, of course, you have to upload the sketch first, which I've done. But you can see you can use the board like this. So you don't have to plug it in to the wall using the 9 volt adapter. You can just run it directly from the computer once you upload the sketch. And so we come to the IDE where we program the sketch. This arrow is upload. All we have to do is hit that button and it uploads it. It compiles it and everything and uploads it to the board. So of course I already had it uploaded but I'm doing it again just to show you. Now uh, Installing this IDE and making sure it works with your computer and the board is a process. They give you instructions on how to install all of that. I'm not going to go through all of that, but uh, just be aware of that. If you haven't used this yet, you don't just jump uh, right into using it. You have to get it set up first, but they give you instructions how to do that. And it was really easy for me to get it done, so don't be afraid of that, but just be aware of that. Uh, I don't mention that every video, but if you haven't already installed this stuff, you're going to have to before you start using the board and stuff. 